everybody, welcome to another episode of On the Paint Table. It's my weekly show where you see what I got done, what I'm working on, and what is coming up. So, it was blast for the plast slash brand new things week this week on my painting table uh, as I cranked out, oh god, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, Baker's Dozen. Uh, Rogue Trader Minis for Stargrave, uh, which I'm super excited about. I'm going to be playing the Bounty Hunter missions, uh, Dead or Alive, with um, the other crew I really wanted to paint for Stargrave, my Rogue Trader collection, uh, which you'll see in a second. And I painted a new protagonist to be a Bounty Hunter. We're going to do like a prelude with the Bounty Hunter missions uh, on Logan's World, where uh, another Inquisitor, maybe the maybe the old mentor of Inquisitor Toulon Hess, uh, during the previous 25 year, like 10 days where Logan's World is available to the Imperium, goes hunting for a renegade orc and tries to find him. So anyway, I'll show you those miniatures. I also built and painted one of each of the new Stargrave um, North Star Minis plastics. Uh, uh, was it Osprey Games was nice enough to uh, hook me up with some of the new plastics that are the officially licensed miniatures for Stargrave. And they fit great in my Rogue Trader collection. I painted one of the Troopers, the Crew, and the Mercenary boxes. These are like 20-man plastic boxes that are all multi posable, super fun to build and paint, really chunky sculpts. Uh, just so that I could actually pad out and have some new miniatures for my bounty hunting warband, and also just so I can give these a, a go. Uh, I got two miniatures left to paint my orc warband, but they don't fit into the adversaries list right now because this was designed to be a warband, and I need to use the adversaries from the Dead or Alive tables. Um, so they just kind of got got put to the side in preference for painting something else. Uh, and I also sort of started digging out some stuff for my Stormcast. I played a game with my Stormcast using the new Stormkeep rules this past week with Owen, and really liked my Cell Star Ballista. And I realized I think I, I traded my buddy Jay for um, the Stormcast half of Soul Wars way back when Second Edition came out. I can't believe that's like three years ago now. And so I actually have enough to make like a ten man unit of sequiturs. Sequiturs. Equators and um, another Celestar Ballista. So I'm going to start hopefully getting that stuff built and painted to build a storm keep because it feels like shooting is the way and sequiturs at the moment are the, the infantry. I mean, liberators, the ones you lean into, take a big unit of them and then back them up with some sequiturs. So anyway, I'll show you what I got done and what is coming up. So here's another 18 minis uh, from my Rogue Trader collection, uh, a couple of which are brand new miniatures, of course. Starting off, uh, we have Inquisitor Oberon Jedediah. This is my Inquisitor Lord who's, of course, gone missing on Logan's World and might be the whole reason why Tulan Hess is searching for him. You can see he's got maybe a slightly demonic looking sword. It has a face and is like a fire snake. So, I mean, he might be a radical. He's got a cool hat. He's got a cool metal beard that I guess rebreathes into him. Uh, some cool iconography. This is a classic Inquisitor, um, Inquisitor sculpt from Rogue Trader. And it holds up pretty well. I, had, I mean, I hand painted on some Inquisition symbols and a few more details just kind of make them pop. But for the most part, he's just a fun, different, like weird Inquisitor model. He can have a backpack, but I just kind of like chose not to put one on. I have a ton of Rogue Trader backpacks I could use, but I felt like having him not like, like maybe not be in Power Armor is better for Rogue Stars. So I just left it off and painted that as if it was like a gas canister and some bronze. Um, he's painted with, I believe, Dark Reaper as a base coat, blown up through some beige. Got some Rakarth flush in the gloves, blown up through some Screaming Skull. Um, it's uh, actually the Grey Knight Steel, I believe, for the metallics. Uh, washed down with some Nano Wash, and then some Dwarf Bronze, or Rune Lord Brass, maybe, for the metallics, and then blend it up through a bit of Stormhost Silver. Uh, then, oh man, big, big, huge, huge thanks to Paul Shorten. I got to paint a Gyrinx. I love this miniature. It's a space kitty, so I painted like a space kitty. He's actually gonna be my, my second in command. I, pay, I put him on a 20 mil base because he's teeny, so it just it fit him better. Um, but he's gonna be my second in command for the um, the the crew, my my like first mate or whatever. And he'll be the shape changer, the biomorph. So I'm gonna do him Beast Boy style, where he like he gets bigger and like can change shape and become whatever you need him to be to go to go beat people up. And he's, uh, he's Luna to Oberon Jedediah's Sailor Moon, uh, giving advice and, and teaching people, you know, what's what and trying to hunt down bad guys. So I just did him in like a classic, like blue, the sort of glowy green highlights in the back just gave him a little bit of like extra detail, kind of made him look a little more magic space cat. But the sculpt is amazing. Like for how old this sculpt is, this is one of my Grail Road Trader minis, like the animals and monster minis. I have an Amble and now have a Grimex thanks to Paul and um, yeah, like so appreciative. I, I love painting this miniature and it was super fun to to finally get to actually do. So that's a, like a big like bucket list thing for me. 
Then over here, uh, we've got Ruck and Throg. <laughs> They're not actually the I mean, this is actually, I think, is the Ruck miniature um, from Battle at the Farm and Rogue Trader, a classic orc boss from the original like orc boss series. And he fits a 32 really well. I'm glad I decided to put my characters and my armor troopers on 32s because a lot of these scalps like just fit better on 32s. They're a little more spacious and it sets them apart from the rest of the gang. Uh, you can see he's got his weird like shooter with like a blade on the stock, cool stab a knife. All these orcs are painted the same base coat. I airbrushed them all like a deep sort of like storm coat gray uh, and then various washes. And I did the skin tones two ways. I wanted there to be kind of different orc skin tones. So this one is the one where I use, I think it's Catachan green or whatever the Catachan green is called now uh, with some yellow blended into it for the highlights. And then the other way, the darker way is this way where I use the same Catachan green, but I blend a flesh tone into it instead. So that's the like more like muted way with the flesh tone and then some of the orcs are a bit brighter and then it just gives you like some variation like i like having variation i've actually seen these guys painted in like proper brown flesh tones too and i might do a couple that way to change them up but i've got a couple troopers a sentry because that's what his bayonet gives him uh this guy's just gonna be like a recruit have the grots be recruits because why not uh, this guy's a burner he's got like a weird plasma gun <laughs> i think it's supposed to just be like a bolter but I painted like a plasma because it looks like a plasma gun. It's going to be a plasma flamer or something like that. Uh, I got an armor trooper. One of the old knobs in armor. Oh, look at how cool he is with his like weird power fist pistol and kind of bizarre plasma gun and shoulder speaker because he's like beating out the tunes while <laughs> he's beating people up. And he's got these weird like backpack launchers and stuff too. He's so cool. Such a great old knob mini. Uh, this is going to be Throg Bullneck. Uh, he'll actually be the boss. And he's, you can see he's got a field police helmet that he's leaning on there. And I did him in a variety of colors, some checks and dags and stuff too. But all just worked up from dark gray, you know what I mean? And then thrown a wash down and did all the highlights. He is a fabulous miniature. Uh, the basis, everybody always asks, it's Sterling Battlemire, dry brushed with mm, orange brown. I can't remember what it's called anymore. It's not XV88, it's the one up from that slightly later. Hmm, it used to almost be bubonic brown. <laughs> That's what I call bubonic brown now, and then a bit of beige on the edges. And this is my grenadier, because you can see he's got a grenade. The grenade's supposed to be a grenade launcher. This guy's got a really long left arm, so he's really good at throwing things. That's my that's my grenade launcher story. Um, I could also use him as a commando, maybe. Uh, he's got like a helmet, and he kind of looks like a commando. Or as a, or I mean, that, that could actually just be a grenade launcher that he sticks the grenade into. Uh, or as a um, commando or a pathfinder. I might use them as two. And then a couple squig hounds. Because you gotta have dogs, guard dogs. And these squig hound minis are awesome. Look at this guy. He's got no legs except for the front. He's got weird teeth, very well manicured nails, giant mohawk. I imagine that's where this guy gets his mohawk from. He just cuts a piece off that guy and it grows on his head. And then this is the little like furry one. <laughs> Looks like a gerbil, but has like an orc face. I did them in different colors and stuff too, because obviously squigs and squigs and orc culture are a big deal. So I don't know, maybe face eater squig. <laughs> this one's a hair squig. And uh, that's the first two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven minis for my orc or band, uh, which of course I'll also use for Rogue Trader. And these three guys are from the new Stargrave crew box, and I painted them up in my uh, same Imperial Army like grays uh, as the rest of my Rogue Trader minis that I've done for the Imperial Army so far. They're nice big chunky, like sort of like multi-part posable plastics. This is from the Trooper box, I did one from each box. This is the Trooper box, you can see he's got like a more like futuristic carbine um, and like a cool like monocle. I did him as a commando, so he's got like a shotgun and a, a knife. He's my, my commando mini from the, the Warband. Uh, added on the backpack and the grenades. This guy's just gonna be a trooper. So he's got a cool like auto rifle thing. He has the more like Star Wars helmet, <laughs> which I thought was cool. Like that's very much a Star Wars pilot helmet. All of the frames have different, like almost trope style helmets. And this guy's got the Imperial Walker Star Wars helmet. I'm thinking he has a medic. So you can see he's got like a little medic bag there with the Prime Helix on it. He's also got the big red one. I did them with like either a shotgun or a pistol. I haven't decided what it's supposed to be. I think the medic has a pistol. Uh, and they're all done in the same sort of color scheme. Dark gray up through light gray. This was done with the, these ones, these were all done with Citadel. These were done with the army painter paints because I did the originals in the army painter color scheme. And I wanted them all to match. And the base are done the same. I used Highland and Scorched Tufts from army painter on all these, like a mix. Uh, and that's my 18 models I painted this week. There's the two, two guys who were left. I have my gunner. I got to paint up. So you can see it's an orc with a heavy bolter and some cool sweet shades. Uh, and then this guy, and I actually didn't airbrush them at the same time, so I just threw like a, a base coat of a Dubs Battleground on them just to kind of mimic my, my airbrushing because I forgot them in the case. And this guy's gonna be my hacker because he's awesome. He's got his deck and his like cool like space helmet 
of like tubes and hacky stuff. So he's gonna he's gonna go and hack the planet. And those are my last two orcs to paint, and then the orc like starter project is done. Uh, these are all the Frostgrave boxes, or the Frostgrave Stargrave boxes. So this is the Troopers box, the heavy guys. You can see you get a missile launcher, which I think would count as a grenade launcher in this game. You get like a heavy rapid fire, so like a bolter style thing, space shotguns, space sniper rifles, uh, space rifles, lots of knives. You got like full visor gas mask heads. And then I used the um, the not gas mask heads for my guy, and then a full set of bear heads, male and female. Because obviously, with that much armor on, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just use whatever heads you want to make them whatever gender you want them to be. Uh, and then over here, we got the crew. Um, and the crew, again, also have basically all the weapon options. So sniper rifle, heavy rapid fire, uh, rocket launcher slash missile launcher, shotguns, rifles. And then this one's really cool because it has alien heads. You get, like, dog head, bird head, squig head, raccoon head... Uh, big glowing eyes, rogue trooper head, bum chin uh, head, uh, what is it, Leia disguises bounty hunter head, <laughs> tons of different options, uh, and a monkey head too, for a space champ. And this is the mercenaries one, a little more ragtag with the weapon options. The biggest difference is, like, the clothes are all relatively similar, obviously the troopers are the most heavily armored, then the crew are kind of second armored. These guys are more wearing, like, space jerkins, these are a little more firefly. And again, you got alien heads, lots and lots of like human heads that are bare. And then over here, you got lots of helmet and spaceship heads, bionic heads, cyclops heads, and weapon options. And you get 20 of each in a box. So yeah, like that's a that's a good amount of plastics. They come with flat bases. I did base them on um, uh, GW 25 mil bases because, uh, well, the only thing I don't like about these bases is they don't have any lip underneath them. So if you try and send them on train, they slide. They don't have anything to grab onto like a hill or a slope with. And they slide around a bunch, so I tend to rebase my my Stargrave stuff. Yeah, I found this box of random random sprues from Soulstorm. So I've got uh, ten sequiturs. I mean, more castigators too, but I, I don't know when I'd use them. Uh, and another Soul Star Bliss. I need to build and paint. Um, getting excited for AOS three. So there you go, another on the paint table done and on the books. Another 18 models painted this week. Um, and of course, lots of projects on the go. Uh, you'll be able to see what I get done next week on Saturday. Until I'm Ash, how are you doing? I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs, um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible, uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else, and most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.